Okay, so at this point, I now have my key listener implemented. Um, and so what's happened now is I've added the key listener to this applet with this line here. But what I wanted to do is the following. When a key is pressed, I want to toggle the appropriate Boolean value. And when a key is released, I want it to untoggle it. So for example, if we take a look at the Boolean up, if I, if I want the W value to be my up key, when the user presses the W, I want to change that Boolean to true. And when the user releases the W, I want to change it back to false. So that means I'm going to come down here into my, and I'll just clear these out, into my key events that are automatically fired off whenever a key is pressed. And to do this, I need to include a conditional statement. So one thing we didn't talk about in the last video is what this key event is. What this key event is, is a special object that is always passed to this method, which contains all the information about the key being pressed. So the key event, E, actually holds the information about what key is being pressed. And so what we want to do is create a conditional statement and say, if the key is a W, then I'm going to do something. So we're going to start with an if statement. We're going to say if, and now we need to actually get that information about that key event. So I'm going to say if e dot get key code, which is going to get the key code, um, is equivalent to, and now there's a couple ways you can do this. Each key on the keyboard has an integer value, which you would have to look up at a table. But the key event class, which we can look up online, so if I pop up a Google browser, and I do a Google search for key event class and Java 7, I recommend keeping the Java 7 on the end because that's the newest version. You'll see that the key event has a number of fields that are constants. And if I come down here, all along here. These are all constants. So these are fields that represent the specific keys. So we will see that there's a VK underscore D is the constant associated with the D key. Or VK underscore E is the constant associated with the E key. So what I can do then is I can say, well, key event, and now dot VK underscore w. So I want to see have they pressed the w key and if they have I'm going to set and if we just scroll up to remind ourselves the up true to true. Now I'm just going to pause it and I'm going to write the code for each of these. So I'm going to write the same code for each key. So now I've added a conditional statement for each case. So e dot get key code key event is equivalent to key event dot vkw means is the w key pressed? And we've done one for the s, the a, and the d. I've also included a little output to the screen because right now there's no way for me to tell if this is working unless there's some some information pushed out from the program. So if I run my first game file now, if I press the w, we can. Oh, sorry. One thing now. You'll notice that initially you won't actually press any keys and nothing happens. Click in the window once because that's going to make it active. And we'll see shortly how to make it active right when you start up. So if I press the W key, we can see W pressed, A key, A is pressed, S key, S is pressed, and D, so the D key is pressed. So remember, we want to, we want to set it true when the key is pressed, but then toggle it back to false when it's released. So if I copy all of this information, and I'm going to paste it into the key released. So now, if the key code is W, I want to toggle up from, from true to false. And I want to say that W has been released. I'm just going to pause it and make all those changes. So what we've done now is added similar logic in the release section. But what we said is that if the key is released, toggle it back to false. And so now if we run this, Pardon me, let's just double click the right one here, first game, and we run this file. Click inside to make it the active window, and I press Q, 
Keys pressed, keys released. A is pressed, A is released. S is pressed, S is released. D is pressed, D is released. Notice if you press one of the keys and hold it, it will continue to say pressed. There's a reason for that, but we won't get into it right now as it won't affect what we're doing too significantly at this point. Okay, in the next video, what we're going to do is start to put some of these, these key presses to actual good use. Hope this helps.